Welcome back to Elements of Art. I'm Natasha and I have another art question for you. Have you ever heard of the artists Vasily Kandinsky or Vincent van Gogh? Well, today we are going to be learning more about both of these artists and exploring how they use the element of line in their art. Learning about different famous artists helps expand our knowledge and appreciation of art history while providing us with great visual examples to connect with our study of the elements of art. Both Kandinsky and Van Gogh are known for their use of line in their paintings, as are many other artists, but we've chosen these two to study today because they were very prolific, meaning they made a lot of artwork, and they use line in different ways. In today's lesson, we'll be learning about Kandinsky and Van Gogh. We'll look at how each use line to create mood, movement, and emotion in their artworks. And we will also be comparing and contrasting their use of line and how it contributes to the overall composition and meaning of their artworks. Vasily Kandinsky and Vincent van Gogh are well-known and renowned artists. Studying some of their artwork will allow us to gain a deeper understanding of the element of line and develop a greater appreciation for the versatility and expressiveness of this element and learn how it can be used to convey a wide range of emotions and ideas in art. Vasily Kandinsky lived from 1866 to 1944. He was a Russian-born artist and considered a pioneer of abstract art. He initially trained as a lawyer before dedicating himself to art. He believed that art should go beyond representation and should express emotions and spiritual experiences through color and line. His works are characterized by vibrant colors, bold lines, and organic shapes. He had a major influence on the development of abstract art. First up, we'll be taking a look at some of Kandinsky's paintings. I've selected four of them for us to examine. They include Composition 8, Composition 9, Composition 10, and Delicate Tension. First, Let's start by taking a look at Composition 8. Thinking about all you've learned about lines in this unit, what do you notice about how Kandinsky uses line here? You might notice that Kandinsky uses line in an abstracted or non-objective way. He uses a variety of lines, including thick black lines, thin white lines, and swirling curved lines. Most of the lines are black, straight and going in a diagonal direction. What effect do these lines have for you? Most of the lines are pretty thin and delicate. So for me, that creates a sense of delicateness and fragility. The lines also create a sense of rhythm, allowing me to get the feeling they are dancing on the canvas. Now, let's take a look at composition nine. In this painting, Kandinsky uses some lines in a more geometric way, with background lines looking sharp and precise. How do the background lines create a visual structure for the piece? I see the lines as almost a division in the work for focus pauses, allowing me to focus on the lines overlaid on each colored stripe individually. The background of the piece is quite different from the other lines contained within. How do the diagonal lines in the background contrast with the curved lines in the foreground? You may have noticed that the lines on top of the background have more curvature and fluidity, a nice contrast from the solid diagonals. Next, we have composition 10. What type of lines are you first noticing in this piece? I see curved and broken choppy lines. What effect or sense of feeling do the lines in the artwork create for you? For me, the lines create a sense of depth and space, as if the shapes in the painting are emerging from or receding into the background. 
Lastly, let's take a look at the painting Delicate Tension. Take a moment and really look for the lines used and what effects they provide the painting. How does the plain background affect the ease of viewing the lines? The very empty background in this piece is a bit different from the others. For me, it allows some true focus on the lines themselves. What happens visually as these lines of the art intersect? Which line pulls your focus the most, acting as the focal point? I think the line I focus on most is the centermost and longest line in the art, the black diagonal. There's a graphic organizer in your lesson notes that will allow you to write down your observations about each of Vasily's artworks that we focused on. Pause the video and take a moment to reflect. Vincent van Gogh lived from 1853 to 1890. He was a Dutch-born post-impressionist artist who was widely regarded as one of the greatest artists of all time. Despite selling only one painting during his lifetime, his distinctive style and use of vivid colors has made him one of the most popular and recognizable artists in the world. He is best known for his flowing brushstrokes, bold use of color, and emotional intensity. Now let's take a look at some of Van Gogh's paintings. Again, I have selected four for us to examine. These include Starry Night, Corn Harvest in Province, Irises, and Two Poplars. Let's start with one of Vincent Van Gogh's most well-known pieces, Starry Night. What types of lines do you see straight away at first glance? Van Gogh uses bold, sweeping lines to create a sense of movement and emotion. The first lines that capture my attention are the swirling lines in the sky that create a sense of movement and energy. What do you notice about the lines of the dark cypress tree at the left of the image and how they contrast with the sky? I find that the thick black lines in the cypress tree add a sense of solidity and stillness when contrasted with the curving and swirling sky. Next, let's look at corn harvest in Provence. What type of lines do you see being used to represent the cut grain? It seems to me that Van Gogh is using these short, repeated ochre lines to depict the grain. Where else do you see line in the work? One line that I notice is the implied horizon line delineated by the color change of yellow to blue. What do you think about the sky's lack of a strong use of line? Does it function positively or negatively in the piece? On one hand, I feel that the lack of line helps the eye to rest in the sky. But on the other, I find the lack of lines make the sky a little less interesting than the ground. In irises, Van Gogh uses bold sweeping lines in the leaves. What effect do these create for you? I get a sense of movement and emotion from the bold lines, almost as though the flowers are moving about and speaking to one another. What do you notice about the line type on the ground and in the background of the flowers as compared to the lines of the flowers themselves? It seems to me that the length of the lines is very different. The lines on the ground and background are significantly shorter than the lines used in the flowers. This helps the flowers to stand out for me. What do you think? Lastly, let's take a look at two poplars. What type of line do you feel is primarily used in this piece? The primary line type I see is curved lines with just a slight sprinkling of more straight lines to define the buildings in the distance, which I think is a nice smidge of contrast. Where else is there contrast in this piece? Do you see any directional contrast? I feel that the vertically aligned lines of the tree contrast nicely with the more horizontal lines of the sky.
Kandinsky and Van Gogh both use line in their artworks to create mood and movement and emotion, but in different ways. Kandinsky's use of line was more abstract and non-representational, whereas Van Gogh's use of line was more realistic and representational. Let's review the idea of non-representational or non-objective. This means that no actual subject matter is included in an image. Kandinsky's lines are not meant to depict or define actual known objects. They are only meant to function as design. With Van Gogh's lines, they are representational, attempting to depict recognizable objects realistically or naturalistically, meaning that the texture and flow of actual objects are emulated with painted lines. The lines are intended to look like or reference real subject matter. What other similarities and differences do you see in the use of line by Kandinsky and Van Gogh? Are there any we haven't mentioned? Both Vasily Kandinsky and Vincent Van Gogh used line in their art to convey movement and emotions. Their use of lines is expressive and creates a sense of dynamism in their paintings. They both use thick and thin lines to add emphasis and expressiveness to their compositions, and they both use lines to create a sense of energy and movement in their works. Additionally, both artists created a sense of depth and dimension in their paintings by using line. Overall, Kandinsky and Van Gogh's use of line created visually interesting and dynamic compositions, full of emotional impact. Did you find these artists inspiring? Wasn't it neat to see how some of the basic ideas that you've already learned can be found in famous artworks? Maybe you even saw something you'd like to include in your own artwork. If you enjoyed the art we viewed today, there are many more examples from both artists available in books and online. Remember, art is all around you. Hey, hey.